So welcome to the negative punishment video or method three. So today we will be going over negative punishment, which is the removal of a favorable stimulus to reduce a behavior. So we will be going over the steps of negative punishment, timeout, the steps of timeout, some common errors, and then response cost. So here are the steps of punishment, negative punishment. There is the occurrence of behavior followed immediately by a consequence or as immediately as we can. And thus it has the less chance of the behavior occurring in the future. And some things to be careful while choosing negative punishment is the relational issue that can arise with the client and the person who is doing the method. And the person may become an adverse stimulus to the organism. So going over time out, this is when you remove a person or organism from a good environment. Remember, we are talking about the environment, okay? And it has to be an environment that is reinforcing to the organism itself, because if the environment is not reinforcing, then it is, and it is adverse to the subject, this method will not work. So if a child really hates a classroom, say, and that environment is adverse to them and you put them in timeout, they will see timeout as reinforcing. So they'll continue the negative behavior that we don't want them to be engaging in. So some things to consider is the intensity of timeout. So like how long it is or where it is the immediacy of timeout, so how fast the consequence of timeout is after the behavior, the frequency and contingency, so how many times a child has to do something wrong to be put in timeout, or every time they do something wrong, they be put in timeout. Abolishing operations, make sure the environment that the subject is being removed from is reinforcing. And make sure that timeout is not paired with reinforcement. So, you know, attention giving while putting them in timeout and make sure the subject is actually doing the timeout correctly, you know? So some other consideration is providing no attention to the subject while they are in timeout. Try and use other non-aversive methods at, instead or like, try them first because typically punishment is usually the last resort that we want to go to and timeout must be brief so use the one minute per year rule so if a child is five years old do five minutes if they are 10 years old use 10 minutes and then have, because of this using this one minute per year method it's more practical and safe so some common errors with people doing timeout is they're nagging, scolding, talking to the child while they are in timeout or taking them to timeout. And then they're struggling with the child taking them to timeout. There's the failure to follow through after threatening timeout or telling the child to do, go to timeout. And then the child, like I said, is using it for escape. So if the environment initially was adversive, timeout, probably is reinforcing to maintain the behavior. Giving too much attention while in timeout. So like talking to them and then there's too many warnings before they are put into timeout, you know? And then now we got response cost, which is the last thing on the list. And this is the contingent loss of re reinforce that was there. So if something is used, it is taken away. So things such as fines, you know, run a traffic light, get fined, money is taken away. So typically a differential reinforcement procedure should always be used with kind of punishments and extinction procedures. So it gives them an alternative, you know, behavior to go off on. And then some considerations we must look up is, you know, 
which reinforcer is being removed? So for fines, it's money. And if the reinforcement is delayed or immediate, so you know how fines when you run a red light, you don't have to pay right away. You get like a warning, right? A ticket. So this is the usage of a verbal or symbol of a loss. And these can also be conditioned punishers because you will pay for it later with the ticket being the symbol and then you have to pay for it. And then you have to understand if the reinforcer, if it's lost, if it's ethical. So you cannot violate the rights or do harm to a person. So you cannot like cut someone's hand off if they try to steal you know that's not ethical and it has to be practical and acceptable so it has to be be able to be carried out and that's about it thank you so much for watching this video